I am live. Hello. Good evening, everyone. How are you all doing? Today, I just wanted to come on here on, um, on Facebook Live to talk about domestic violence. I know it's, it's a very sad topic, but um, a story is today I received a letter from a social worker uh, describing the client's situation in a refuge. And um, as I was reading the letter, because it is a letter that I need to submit to the Home Office with her applications. And as I was reading the letter, I found myself crying um, because I felt it was so sad to, to read this situation. You know, she's so, client was destitute, basically. So I feel I, I feel I need to inform people about the different rights that you can do if you're a victim of domestic violence. And not so much about spouse visa, but it's kind of related because if you're on a spouse visa and you're a victim of domestic violence, it also applies to you. You have rights to apply to the courts for, for two things you can uh, make an application. One is called non-molestation order. And the other is occupation order. I'll talk about these orders later, but I mentioned before that if your spouse is the owner of the property, you can apply to the land registry to have your rights as a spouse uh, registered on the title of the property. So it would mean that if, for example, um, you need money from your husband or your spouse, um, later on, if he comes to sell the property, then you may be able to negotiate some kind of lump sum money from him. Okay. So that's one of the rights that you can, that's one of the things that you can do to secure your rights. The other thing um, to do if you are a victim of domestic violence and, you know, it is a serious, serious, serious um, incident where um, the police are, in, are involved, for example, then you can apply for um, non-molestation order, it's basically protecting you and your children from further violence from your husband, okay? And the court will make that order only on the basis of your, um, sometimes just your statement, even without the police, um, that can also be granted, but there will be hearing, court hearings, and so you will be attending courts and, and giving evidence. And obviously your, your spouse will also be there. But you can make that application um, to the court and it will protect you from the further violence from your, uh, from your spouse. It's kind of an injunction, a restraining order. I think it's equivalent uh, in other jurisdictions. But in, in the UK, it's called non-molestation order. The other court order that you can apply is called occupation order. And what that does is you basically asking the court to exclude your husband, your spouse. I always say husband. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> this is just because I'm a woman. But I should say spouse, um, partner. Even though you're not married, you can, you know, you can, you can apply for an uh, occupation order. Uh, you're entitled to apply for occupation order if your spouse is. Mm, if your spouse owns the property and um, and you don't, or you have a tenancy agreement and both of you are on um, the tenancy, for example, and it's intended that you both live in the property, then you can go to court and ask the court, the judge, to exclude him from the property, okay? And again, you need a witness statement and it may it may also help if you go to a solicitor. Usually, when you go and report your situation you go to the police and report them the police would refer you to an organization that helps um, we, helps women or men um, suffering from domestic violence and they would also refer you to a lawyer who deals with these things so they will advise you to apply for occupation occupation order or non-molestation order so it is up to you you may feel that you don't want to proceed because I think a, a lot of a lot of um, clients uh, I I found that they they really don't want to proceed with court hearings or they don't it is like they don't want to punish their husband for 
for what they're doing to them so for their situation so they they feel guilty for taking it further excluding them from the property or um uh, uh, having a court order against the husband or taking even even um as a witness um in criminal criminal proceedings they don't want to do that or sometimes they do and then they change their mind um i have many clients like this so for example one who she was she was um she was really determined to you know report him to the police and and uh and and she went for interview and you know she took it that further and then what the police did was i think the husband was um coming from a holiday and when he was in the airport i think they took him to the police station straight away they detained him arrested him and detained him and after that after all that hassle, she changed her mind. Okay, so, but for me, I think you should just, for me, I, in my opinion, I think you may think that at that moment you don't want to proceed, but think about the future, think about what you're going to do because the relationship has already broken. You, the trust between yourselves, between, um, between each other has already gone by the spouse committing the violence. So. It's not gonna get any better, unfortunately, um, if if these things happen in 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 the relationship. So think about your future and think about what you're going to do in terms of money, okay? And and property, property definitely is very important, especially if you have children. So if you have, um, if you want to to not to uproot your children and put them in a refuge then you know by all means i think you should apply for occupation order asking the court to allow you to stay in the property even though if it's not in your name um or or the tenancy it's not in your name or if you don't want to do that then make sure you register your matrimonial home rights at the land registry so that your husband your your um, partner your wife who is committing the the domestic violence can't uh sell the property without your permission then you are if you register that the your your rights then you are at an advantage because you can then negotiate some money from him because you are entitled to to get money from your um from your spouse because you are you are married under the matrimonial home rights you are entitled okay so uh, yeah i just wanted to talk about those Two applications because I omitted, I omitted, <laughs> I omitted them. So um, I omitted to 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 mention it before. And while going through uh, while going through materials, I realized okay, I've, I have to tell you okay, especially for those who um, may benefit from it, and and for those who are currently married and. Um, I hope you don't have to experience domestic violence because it's not, you know, it's, I, it, but, but it does happen. Okay. It does happen. And unfortunately for, um, maybe 70% of my clients, divorce clients, domestic violence, there's domestic violence there. And, and so it's not uncommon. Okay, guys, I just wanted to hop in and, um, share that with you because it's been quite an emotional day for me, I must say. Okay, hi, I hope everyone has a lovely evening. Thanks for watching.